What is up guys? It is Joe here from Joe Tots Wrestling and today I am giving you my WWE Clash at the Castle 2022 predictions video. Now unfortunately I'm not going to the event live. I couldn't manage to get it sorted out with time off work and actually getting there and staying over in Wales and stuff like that. Couldn't get it sorted so I'm going to be watching it at home. Uh, like the majority of you. If you are going to the event though, let me know in the comment section down below. I hope you have a great time. Anyway, just like my normal predictions videos, hopefully uh, this is going to be the same. It's a bit different this time because it's being filmed before the Go Home Smackdown, but the Go Home Smackdown was actually pre-taped, but I haven't seen any leaks from it that suggest that there's new matches being added. Uh, but if there is, like normal, I will add them and my description, uh, and my prediction, sorry, in the description and the comment section down below, just in case there is any matches that are added after this video goes up. Anyway, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's get right into my first Clash of the Castle prediction. The first match on the card is Edge and Rey Mysterio taking on the Judgment Day, Finn Balor and Damian Priest. I'm assuming Dominic's gonna be at ringside for Edge and Mysterio, and Rhea Ripley's gonna be at ringside for the Judgment Day. I don't know how this is going to work out. I feel like WWE have been building to a Dominic heel turn for a little while now. Uh, and I'm just unsure whether or not this is the time they're going to pull the trigger on it. But I think that there's going to be some conflict maybe between Dom and Edge. And uh, yeah, that is going to cause them to lose. So I have got the Judgment Day picking up the victory. Coming up next, we have an Intercontinental Championship match between the champion Gunther and Sheamus. Now, I have been saying that Sheamus needs to win the IC title for a long time now, uh, but I don't see it happening here. The Intercontinental Championship is the only title that Sheamus has left to like win in WWE. Other than that, he has done everything. Everyone always sleeps on Sheamus, but they forget he is King of the Ring, Royal Rumble winner, Mr. Money in the Bank, WWE Champion, World Heavyweight Champion, Tag Team Champion, United States Champion. The only thing he literally needs is the Intercontinental Championship, but I don't see him beating Gunther. So I am going with Gunther to retain. The next match on the card is one that I am very excited to see, especially off the back end of the promo on Raw. Whew. We have Seth freaking Rollins versus the man that's just got his first name back, Matt Riddle. Now, this one could really go either way. Uh, we could see a Randy Orton return, potentially. I mean, I've, I've seen people talking about it. I don't personally think that's going to happen. Uh, but I do think that Seth freaking Rollins is going to win. You know, he's owed one. After losing to Cody three times, then losing the Money in the Bank ladder match, Seth hasn't really had a good year so far. So, uh, and you know, I, I, I think this is sort of going to be his turning point. Uh, and I think he is going to beat Matt Riddle. Next, we have a six women's tag team match. It is Bianca Belair, Asuka and Alexa Bliss versus Bayley, Io Sky and Dakota Kai. Uh, I don't know the build to this one. I haven't really been watching any of Raw or SmackDown as closely as I probably should have uh, in the last few weeks. But either way, I'm going with Bayley's team to win just on the, based on the fact that they've just come back at SummerSlam. They didn't win the women's tag team championships. Uh, so I think they need this victory to sort of, you know, get themselves back on track, I guess you could say. So Bailey, Dakota and Io, you are going over. The SmackDown Women's Championship is on the line next. We have Liv Morgan taking on Shayna Baszler. Now, I don't think Liv Morgan's championship reign has been what we expected. Uh, and a lot of that is due to the, obviously the controversial victory over Ronda Rousey and stuff like that. I think Liv works best when she's in the chase. Typical babyface when you're chasing. So we need that mega heel to come in, aka Shayna. And I reckon, right, and you, a lot of you probably disagree with this, but this is just me thinking logically into the future booking of how we can build Liv Morgan back up. I think Shayna Baszler squashes her and wins the SmackDown Women's Championship. Because if you squash someone to the level of, like, pure sympathy, if that makes sense, uh, then you can build Liv back up gradually. Whereas right now she's on the top, but she's not the Liv that we like know and love, if that makes sense. So have Shayna come in, win the SmackDown Women's Championship, and we can slowly, once again, build Liv Morgan back up. And finally, the main event of the show, the match I am looking forward to the most. The undisputed WWE Universal Championship is on the line as the champion, Roman Reigns, the Tribal Chief, defends against Drew 
McIntyre. We haven't seen these two go one-on-one -on -one since Survivor Series 2020. Roman picked up the win there via shenanigans after interference by Jey Uso. Will the same thing happen here? I don't think so. You know, I'm... I'm in a very tricky spot here because I feel like Reigns needs to drop one of the championships and I think he would be best doing that to Drew. But he can't do that because both championships are on the line. So I think realistically, as much as I am supporting Drew and I want Drew to win, I think Roman's going to win. So no, I'm going to predict Drew McIntyre to win, right? I'm going to predict that. What happened there? I'm going to predict Drew McIntyre to win. I think Roman's going to win, but if I can fantasy book something here for a quick second. How do you get one championship off of Roman? We have an Austin Theory cash-in, mid-match, triple threat. The Money in the Bank contract, I've been saying this for months, the Money in the Bank contract states you can either challenge, either challenge for the WWE Championship or the Universal Championship. So have Theory come out. Cash in money in the bank. The ref will say, well, which one? WWE Championship. Turns around. Bang. Claymore kick. One, two, three. McIntyre pins theory. Reigns keeps the Universal Championship and loses the WWE Championship without being pinned. And then Drew McIntyre has his moment holding the championship in front of a crowd. The briefcase is off of theory and Reigns still keeps his credibility. WWE, fucking hire me. <laughs> I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. But yeah, I'm predicting Drew McIntyre to win, even though I think it's more likely for Roman Reigns to win. But that was my Clash at the Castle predictions. Anyway, let me know yours in the comments section down below. Once again, are you going to the event? If you are, let us know in the comments. I've been Joe from Joe Talks Wrestling. You guys have been awesome. Clash at the Castle is this Saturday. It's got a very special UK start time. So uh, I will be watching it live and making my live reactions videos for you guys to watch on YouTube. And uh, yeah, like, comment and subscribe and I will see you at Clash at the Castle. Goodbye.